Hello, everybody. Okay, the screen just changed a little bit. Let's see here. Hmm. Well, hello. Today is World Cancer Day. I just learned this because one of my sweet friends I went to college with, Melissa, shout out to you, reached out to me and was telling me that she's been thinking about me today. And um, I was like, what? It's World Cancer Day? I had no idea. So it's so perfect that I was literally reflecting this morning in my journal about things I've learned uh, through chemo. And I'm going to share those with you guys today. So I'm super excited to be able to do this and to share because I've learned so many lessons that I know will help everybody in whatever they're going through. And if you're listening to this today, I want to start off by first saying thank you so much. Hi, Josie. Thank you so much for your kind words for reaching out to me. So many of you guys have reached out with encouragement, with cards, with music, with scripture, with um, just making sure I'm doing okay and cheering me on along this journey of finding out in October that I have ovarian cancer and where I am now. So first and foremost, I wanna say thank you so much to all of you guys who have reached out and who have seen this. And if we are friends, um, I just realized this week because one of my friends, Samantha, reached out to me and had no idea that I was even going through this. And that's just how Facebook and Instagram work, right? Sometimes our friends that we've been friends with for a long time don't see our stuff anymore because we haven't commented on each other. And because of that, they don't even know. So if we are mutual friends with somebody else, please share this with them. If you have anybody in your life right now that's going through a hard time, that's going through a struggle, that is in a storm, please share this with them because I know it will help them as well. And I'm so excited to share this with you guys today and just say thank you. Tomorrow is my last chemo treatment. I'm so excited. And after that, my journey will not be totally over yet after I have my last chemo treatment. Next, right after that, will be um, me going on to a, a week later, get a CT scan to, to make sure nothing has grown, make sure everything looks good. And then about three or four weeks after um, tomorrow, I'll have to have a small surgery to remove my left ovary, which is like the only thing left. And then I'll be started on a estrogen blocker for anywhere from six months to a year. And so the journey is getting closer to the end. I'm so excited. I am ready to feel like myself again. I'm ready to look like myself again, ready to see how this hair grows back. I'm like super excited about that. So I'm pumped and excited, and tomorrow with it being my last chemo treatment, I'm going to be all by myself because they're still not letting anybody in because of um, COVID, but I'm so thankful that the first couple ones I was able to have people with me. So I'm not dwelling on the negative. I'm instead being super thankful for what is and what has happened, and I see all of you guys hopping on. Love you too. I appreciate you so much, all of you. So here's the things that I have learned through chemo. The first one is through the storm, he is Lord. Um, that one has stuck by me. I heard our pastor here in Fort Lauderdale, Pastor Rob Pacienza, say this. Oh, it was like very early on in my journey, and I wrote it down in this journal, and I have continued to say it to myself over and over again. Through the storm, he is Lord. Through the storm, he is Lord. And I remember asking questions like, why would he do this? When I felt alone, even though you're, you know, you're surrounded by so many, those of you that are going through a struggle right now, you're going through a personal health journey right now, you know that even though you might have the most amazing support team, you might have the most amazing people in your life, there are moments that you just feel alone. Nobody else knows that feeling that you're going through, that scared, that frightened, that frustrated, that upset feeling, or even just not feeling good. Nobody else knows that feeling except you and your Lord and Savior. And so there were so many times where even though I was surrounded by many, I felt alone, but he was always there. Even when I asked him questions like, why would you do this? This doesn't make any sense. Or why... Is this happening to me? Or why did this thing have to happen? Or this have to happen? Along the way, like I still felt close to him. And so that is the very first thing. Through the storm, he is Lord. And know that you can go to him with anything. And you can talk to him every single moment of it and grow closer in your relationship with him. The second thing I learned going through chemo is people want to help, but they don't really know what to say or what to do. And I used to be this person. So I get it, like I wouldn't know what to say or do for somebody either. So as you know, I was going through this, I noticed that a lot of people would just be uncomfortable, they didn't know what to say or how to say it, or they would say the wrong thing, or I could just tell like, and I know that feeling, so I totally understood it. So what I learned from that is be willing to tell people what you need or what you want. And that's actually not something that I'm great at. I'm really good at it in like, you know, having um, somebody, you know, do something for me, like I pay for a job and telling them exactly what I need or what I want. 
But for friends or family, sometimes I have a really hard time speaking exactly what I want. So for some reason, I think they should just know that, right? And so instead, it's learning that not everybody's going to know what to say or how to say it while you're going through a struggle, but you have to be willing to tell them what you need. Or if you are not the patient and you're the other person or not the person going through the storm and you're somebody on the outside wanting to help, ask them. What would help you the most? Is it cleaning? Is it meals? Is it helping out with the kids? Is it a specific prayer? Quite often people will share things with me and I'll say, can you give me a specific prayer that you want me to pray for? Because it just lets them know that I care and I want to do what they need, not what I think they need. Um, and so that's a really big one. Like my favorite things that people did for me during this time by helping me were check-in texts. It meant so much to know that people were checking in on me or messages on social media prayers that people sent me, uh, scripture that people sent me, music that people sent me. Uh, one of my friends, Alejandra, sent me you know, all kinds of different music, but she would also send me sermons. It was so helpful. Uh, one of my friends, Terry Carey, created a whole playlist for me that was all of my favorite songs that would lift me up that I could listen to during chemo. And actually, I listen to every day when I take a shower. One of my friends, Beth Graves, you guys might have been part of this. She created a prayer movement that every day at 11, 11, people would stop and pray over me. I mean, how amazing was that? Meals from my local friends here in Fort Lauderdale, meals from people who I haven't even really hung out with in years. And they came out of the woodwork to show me how much they loved me during this time. Uh, flowers, special cute gifts that people sent me in the mail that just made me smile. So many sweet and kind things that happened. And it was so amazing. And then the third thing that I learned during chemo was to get together with those who make you laugh. Laughter is medicine. We all know that, right? So one of the things I did in the very beginning, because I knew this and I was reading it in something, is to not be very careful what I watched on TV. So I wasn't going to watch like these police shows or mysteries or anything like that because it kind of can be a little dark and negative, right? I see so many of you guys posting saying you're part of 1111. I love it. Um, so instead, I forced myself to start watching comedies. Ryan and I watch a comedy together at night. Um, I watch comedies with the kids. I just tried to really keep myself engaged in shows that were going to make me laugh. And then I tried to hang out with people who made me laugh. So trying to eliminate the people in my life who maybe give me some extra stress or maybe the ones who I'm usually having to take care of. Right now, I had to take care of myself. So being around our couple friends um, some of our really good couple friends that we hang out with that make me laugh that you know we hung out with them a lot during this um, our friends Allison and Austin in particular like you know anytime I said hey I need Friday night hangout they were there and we would laugh and play games and have a good time and then being around my girlfriends it's gonna be it's like choking me up um, being around my girlfriends and just laughing with them that was it's just so important laughter is so important and I did not want to cry on this so let me take a deep breath Okay, I'm going to get through this. But laughter is a really big, important part. So if you have those girlfriends or you have those couple friends, ask them. Tell them what you need. Say, I need to go out this weekend. I need to laugh. And because of COVID, I was stuck at home a lot. I'm still stuck at home a lot. But I can say to that group of girlfriends, like, who can come over on Saturday night and hang out outside of my backyard and just, you know, have some fun together? And they always said yes, anybody who was able to do that. The fourth thing that I learned during chemo is that my morning routine is essential. You know, I've been doing a morning routine for years and sometimes I'm really good and consistent. Sometimes I'm like, eh, not so great. But I got back to making sure that I started off my mornings really successfully. And that is because mindset is essential. Your mindset is so important when you're going through a tough time. And when I'm sharing what I'm learning through chemo right now, it can be related to going through a financial storm. It can be related to going through a storm with your family or maybe with a relationship isn't going well right now or maybe with COVID, or maybe with uh, health, whatever it is, there are so many things going on in our world. And I know that they're equally hard and they are difficult to go through. So a morning routine will help set up your mindset for the day. I do devotion, I do gratitude, I do prayer, I do affirmations, I do visualization every single morning. Non-negotiable, I just do it. It might not always be first thing, but at some point in the morning I get to this and it really does help. Um, the next thing, number five, is to get up and be active. So every day, I wasn't working out hard during this. I didn't just like, you know, put my feet up because I was like, oh, I have cancer, I'm not gonna work out. It was more because I'm trying to like nurture and take care of my body and I'm tired quite often. So what I did instead was I committed. I was gonna do five days a week of a 30 minute walk in the sun. 
And so I stuck to that. And most weeks I did six or seven days a week. And what did that do? Well, it got my endorphins running. It got my body moving. It got my health going. It also helped with my mindset because I realized I can walk every single day. I can do something for me every day. And I actually don't even listen to music or listen to anything when I go on my walk. I just walk. Sometimes I'll call a friend and catch up, but the rest of the time I just walk. I look at the nature. I listen to the sounds. I enjoy the moment, feeling the sun on my skin. It's so important to take those time for you and for your body and to move. Be in movement. It is so good for you. Uh, Number six thing that I learned during chemo is to be involved in my health. So being involved in your health, whether you're going through a divorce, whether you're going through a financial burden, whether you're going through, you know, something that doesn't even have to do with your health right now, it's still becoming an advocate to your own health. So I learned, I learned how to change my diet. I learned about the things that I should and should not eat. I learned about the things that I I should and should not think. I learned about um, taking time for myself every single day. I learned about acupuncture. I learned about massage. I learned about deep breathing. I learned about meditation. And I've really invested in reading a chapter of a book every single day that's going to help me with my health journey. So becoming your own advocate, becoming for yourself who you need to be. And then last but not least is believe and visualize the future and plan something ahead. So this one was really big for me because I needed to believe that this was going to work. I needed to visualize what it was going to be like when this is over. And some of the things that helped me do that are planning something ahead. It doesn't have to be a huge trip, but for me, I love traveling. It's been one of the hardest things during COVID and during my cancer journey is to not be able to travel and see people and see new places. And so for me, I needed to have things to look forward to. And so part of that was planning trips. So we planned like a really big trip with our friends, Austin and Allison, with our kids. All of us are going together the first week in June to Arizona to like really do it up and see nature and be in nature and be all together and have a blast. Well, I've been planning every single detail of that trip. I love planning trips. So Ryan was like, you should plan it and we'll plan it together. We'll have fun. And Ryan and I really spent a lot of time like planning out this trip, every single detail and getting excited about it. So I have something to look forward to because I can visualize myself on that trip, cancer-free, able to keep up with everybody, having that energy again and being that mom that's able to show my kids something new and explore with them. Um, The other thing is, you know, even planning small things. Like I know that I have a girls' night coming up next Saturday night outside and that's something exciting to look forward to because tomorrow I'm going into chemo and I know I'm not gonna feel good for five or six days. And so then I have something really exciting to look forward to. So believing and visualizing your future and planning something ahead with that visualization is so important too. So those are the things that I have learned through chemo, but I know that they would help no matter what you were going through. And when I journaled them today, I really wasn't gonna share them, to be honest. It was just something I was doing to reflect on the day before I went into my last chemo. But when I heard it was World Cancer Day, I just knew I had to share these with everybody because if you know anybody who's currently going through cancer or has been through cancer, I know this would benefit them. These are things that I'm going to have to continue to do for the rest of my life. It's not a one shot and it's over. You have to constantly be having the right mindset, changing your health, being involved in your health, um, visualizing that you're going to continue to stay cancer free and all of these other things. I know it's a, a forever journey for me. I know that It's not just, okay, I got through these last four months and now we're over. It's going to be a forever journey. And I have to be okay with that, but I also have to continue to do the things that I know worked for me when I was going through this and allowed me to, yeah, have some days where I cried and then pick myself back up and and keep going and be able to really show up for my family and for others in the way that God would want me to. And I really felt like that was by being honest, by being open, and by being positive. Because there is nowhere in the Bible that says that anything happens by accident. It is very clear that everything is purposeful. Even if it is not uh, something that, you know, is a great thing, there's always purpose in everything. And so for that, I can continue to walk in strength every single day. So I hope this was helpful. If you guys found this helpful, hit that share button, share it with others. I would love that. And I cannot wait to uh, say tomorrow that I'm done with chemo and thank all of you. You guys have been so amazing. You know, some people say negative things about social media and I totally understand why. But this Facebook world, this Instagram world, this way of being able to reach each other through social media has been the biggest blessing to me during this time. Because not only did my friends and family uh, around me really rally and 
you know, be there for me, but all of you virtually have been there for me. I've had so many people through social media reach out to me. I've had so many people who I didn't even know connect me with other people who were going through the same thing that were able to support and love on me. And I was able to support and love on them. And I'm just forever grateful. So for all of you that have reached out to me, for all of you that have commented, for all of you that continue to follow my journey, I'm forever blessed by your love and your outreach and your help during this time. And I love you. Hope you guys have a great day and make it a great day for others. Bye.